very innovative and they're talking about marketing programs and, and kids are signing up and rushing to those and that's wonderful. But that's using our existing staff, using some professional development, looking at what the kids want. That's that kind of innovative thinking our staff does without increasing staff. We start taking away prep time, professional development time. You, we're going to lose that kind of creativity as well. So, Mrs. Biden, if I could just add to that point on the uh, staff, we are also purchasing textbooks for those new courses that we hope to offer, hope to offer next year through our operating budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means our operating budgets, which Carl has kept you at, a, at the 2003 level, is now going to tweak our textbooks, Correct. which it's never meant to be. And just so just people have an idea, for instance, I don't know my, my exact number, but I have seventy-five thousand dollars for my operating budget. That's all copying, copying supplies, maintenance, uh, consumable um, texts for children in the primary grade, the core program, the reading and math. Science, uh, <coughs> How many students, Mr. Lissi? How many students in your school? Including preschool 426. So I mean, it's, you know, and over the years, we've been up 15 years, so I've made the stock out to buy the things that we need on that. So it's not a lot, especially with the copying bit. Except I'm, I'm rounding off college. <laughs> That's all right, you're leaving, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I said you're leaving, it doesn't matter, that's all right. <laughs> but, you know, in, in what... And, and, that, and that's been the same budget for six years. The same budget at every school. I think the high school, maybe one year we did increase, or the batch when it was brand new and we had to buy a few more things, but then we brought them right back down to where they were supposed to be. Or not where they were supposed to be, but where they've been. So it's my, my sense is the supplemental funding from parent boards has yes. filled in that gap. And so, you know, you're back to the parents um, supporting the system through fundraising and user fees to the point where, you know, that's maxed out as well. Mm. And we start to you know, get into that gray area of free and appropriate education. Could you imagine if kids had to buy a textbook and some family just didn't have the money, you know? It, it, the Athletic Boosters Association would tell you that there were increased number of students looking for assistance to play sports because of the unemployment we're experiencing in our town. And so they go out and fundraise to do that. So no kid doesn't participate because the parents can afford it. You know, we're very reluctant to put any more fees or charge parents for anything more. Deanna? Um, if it takes just a couple minutes, I would just beg your indulgence. But um, a couple years ago, most everyone in this room, and with everyone in the front of the room, um, heard a presentation about devastating budget cuts that are going to be made to our school system. And ultimately, many of those cuts were made. And we all endured, whether we were officials or parents or students, an incredibly difficult and challenging year where we did make a lot of reductions. We sent our kids home on vacation at new time every Wednesday afternoon for an entire school year. We also did a disservice to our children by putting them in two hours of study halls, two, uh, you know, two days a week. And when we talk about the impact on the community, and you know the destruction, the bullying that will go on, all the other things that you know are a, you know a single effect. When we don't have students actively engaged with proper time learning, um, there are so many other issues. We keep cutting little bits at a time. We have tons of youth at risk. We have the need for a youth services director. Why? Because the you know when kids aren't actively engaged when they're not getting differentiated you know, uh, teaching. We're not, we're, not, when we're not paying attention to the needs of special ed. When we're not doing the right things, we're increasing the class sizes and driving people out of our communities. When we're doing these types of things, when we're taking resource officers out of our high school, 
little bits at a time. We don't talk about these things enough. Yeah. That's right. I forgot about consistently that. Consistently taken back. Um, I went to a presentation the other night uh, that Ms. Bernard did, and I have spent an awful lot of time participating in parents' association meetings at the middle school. And I just have to tell you, from where we were a couple of years ago to where we are today, you know, Mr. Bernard did a presentation that's called Points of Pride. And I could cry just thinking about all of the work that these administrators, these teachers, the collaborative efforts with our administrators, the school committee, our board of selectmen, our finance committee, the parents, and the members, Stanford children members, members of our community. We are so fortunate to have a discussion like this where we're not screaming at each other, we're not pulling from this to take from that. We work in a cooperative environment. We are an incredibly special community, I think. We are working to support your efforts. We're working hard at the state level, and eventually, if we ever could at the federal level, to help Bob and Sean and Steve and Joe and Jeff and the finance committee do your hard work. We are behind you. We understand that there are contract issues. We understand that there are health care issues. We understand that there are control issues. We and we're here to support so you. Um, none of the proposed cuts are acceptable. Not one of them. We are not going backwards. Not here, <coughs> not today, not tonight, not in 2010, not 2011. So I'm going to ask the Board of Selectmen, as you've asked in the past, we're trying, we're working. We owe it to our kids to keep doing presentations that demonstrate in this community that our teachers are doing everything they can with what they have. Our students are deliberate on a bare bones budget with core programs. We are 65th from the bottom of the state in per people spending. We've done all these charts that flatline and you know, you know, we will be paging, but I'll be dead. <laughs> in every category for administration, for teachers, for maintenance operations, we're not ever asking for extras. We're not Burlington asking to cut the elementary Italian program. Yeah. We're oh, not Andover no. <laughs> asking to cut the gifted and talented program. We're not Hingham or Andover asking to cut the American <coughs> Chinese program. We're talking about eliminating teachers that cut to the core of a classroom. We're at the bare minimums at the state level for days and hours. Um, we can't go backwards. We worked way too hard to still not get to where we were two years ago. For points six years ago. Points to MCAS, SAT scores, ACT scores, the number of students in our community graduated from high school. We have got it right. We have to keep it right. So I'm going to beg, because I don't care if I have to beg in public. I will. Right? For my kids, for your kids, for Jeff's kids, for all our kids. We need to make sure that if we're going to make adjustments and reductions, they have to be fair across the board. And we're going to have to make some tough decisions, and we will continue to fight at the state level as hard as we possibly can to make up some of the gaps. And we need more parents if you're watching, and certainly if you're listening. We can't do this work ourselves. We're tired. You know, for you to say, you know, thanks Andrew and Stanford for children, and the work we have to do for next year, I can't even begin to think about that. I'm too tired today. So parents, there should be 179 people sitting in this damn room. Should be more than that. Should be 400 people. All right, and if they're not uh, there on June 7th, then I guess we can all just throw our hands up and hope for the best next year. That's just not good enough, and it's not acceptable. No. So I appreciate and respect, and I completely value every leader in this room, and I just beg you to find the right way to close this budget de deficit for this year, and we'll go to task. We'll go to town. Thank you. John, All right. Do you have to fly out of the eliminate
small cap broke out into the text books and the smart books.